good morning everybody first video I don't have anything to hold the camera really so I got it kind of like fastened to the wall and uh, today's possible project is to uh, I don't know we'll have to see I don't want this to turn into a big a big deal that's gonna take the whole day soak my whole day up I got these at a hobby shop I think they're a single planetary gear reduction up here in the front and then you got this really nice little motor back here it's actually fairly torquey and it's it's a nice slow rpm what i'm thinking about doing with this is i was i was out snowblowing with my nifty snowblower with the new motor on it and um you know it just it's just such a pain in the butt to stop and crank that handle to move the chute left or right you know it's just easier to keep moving and I don't want to stop I just kinda of want to get done so phase one deciding whether or not it's uh, worth hacking into and cutting my crank off so that now I, I'm kinda of stuck with either welding it back on or making this work or um, there's a second idea that came to me and that is this is a very old drill it's not really waterproof or anything but I could probably make this work what's nice about the drill is after I cut the crank off I can chuck right on the uh, existing shaft and I don't have to worry about concentricity or parallax or anything because this this is within a, a fairly small degree is gonna you know get this thing so that it's running true and the drill itself isn't going to be oscillating and doing all kinds of weird things so this here on the other hand i have to drill a hole right down the center so that it's not like cocked to the side because then you know if you can imagine if i get it in like this when this thing turns it's going to force the shaft to move and the shaft is basically bearing at the other end so then this right here is going to see all that force and it's going to be trying to go like this this is running i do like this better though because it's small this right here is going to look ridiculous but who cares it's effective right that's my thought okay well the first thing i need for this project is to know where the switches are going and how the layout's going to go my girlfriend was nice enough to go ahead and sketch everything up for me real quick we had so much fun we decided to do it again this is a basic layout of the wires and how I'm envisioning this thing going to work. And actually, the way everything did pan out, it was very close. So, Let's give this a try here. Let's see what we've got. A little bit of room. Let's see, lots of projects. A continuous flow of different projects. And you know why I put the tools away? Because uh, you're just going to need them again. That works. It's a very cold day today. December 22nd. This is it. Absolutely nothing can go wrong now. As a good friend of mine, Terry, says. And I guess... Pull this out here if I can. I'm trying to do this so that we can all see. Where here we go. Here it comes. Look at that. This whole thing is coming out. Okay, so anyways, I had completed the project. Here's my relays. I got everything kind of set up here. I'll unplug one just to show you what's going on here. This is one. This is positive from the drill, although it's irrelevant really. Now, I didn't crimp these. If I can get this thing to focus, you can see I soldered them. I opted to go with the actual um, body on here because it kind of holds everything together. I slotted the plastic to make it kind of accept this plate here. But anyways, trust me, it's on there. And this right here is how I've got it wired. This is the most key thing, I think, for anybody that wants to try to do this. Okay, so here's the wires. This is actually a, uh, an extension cord. All this wire came from an extension cord that's been repurposed for this project. So, 
Got a couple relays, they're 12 volt relays, 40 amps. This is the power feed from the motor. It's just hardwired right into the motor now. There's no switch existing the in the motor. Uh, the, the trigger I, is gone. So both of these are going to terminal number 30. Okay, now these outside ones are triggers that run the coil. Okay, 85 and 86. All right, it doesn't matter which side you use. I chose to use, from, from this standpoint, this side on both of them for the negative side of, of the, the coil. These are grounded when you operate the switch here. You can hear the thing running. So when you ground this coil, there's always hot here. You ground the coil and it makes the connection over here. So basically what you have is both coils are wired the same identically. So except for the fact that I have a ground from the switch over here on the right going to this right one. This ground over here goes to the left side switch and runs this one. This drill, both sides are seeing ground. The way I have this thing wired, both of these are getting ground. And you can't get a motor to run on two grounds. What makes this thing run one way or the other is when I, when I cycle this relay, it will jump from supplying a ground to here to supplying a hot to here. This side is still grounded, so it'll turn one way. When I actuate this one, it supplies hot to this side, and this side is normally grounded, so it'll run the opposite way. This is the feed ground for the relay. This right here. So same thing over here. And what isolates the ground from the rest of the handlebar is this piece of, you know, it's just a tag I cut up. So hopefully she works out for the long haul. If not, what, what, what could I have to replace? A relay? A zip tie? 